Hey, 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 y'all. Tell my pastor I said, come on in my room. Listen, we ain't at the church house tonight because we got a foreclosure notice, y'all. They finna condemn the building, child. Um, the women's bathroom, after all that water got on the roof, it got mold. The roof don't finally collapse in there. It done collapsed. And a little bit of money that we did have, I misappropriated it and used it to buy these lights and this microphone. And so now we got an eviction notice and a foreclosure notice and a condemnation notice on the church. And I used the rest of y'all money to buy this nice ass house like Creflo Dollar. So that's just what it is. We having bedside Baptist tonight. And uh, the trustee board trying to get me from off the church because they say I misappropriating the money. And them hoes trying to vote against me. Okay? Them hoes trying to vote me at this church. See, what, they, what they don't understand is I started this and I take all the parishioners with me. Okay? I might have stole some of the money. Okay? But it's hard doing this. Okay, I, <laughs> how are y'all doing tonight? Baby, we got a lot going on in this MF for the night, honey. So we just gonna go ahead and get into it. Hold on this thing. Oh shit, I don't knock this water over my computer. We gonna go ahead and uh Excuse me, let me get this thing closer to my mouth like I did last night. We're going to go ahead and get this thing started. How y'all feeling? Y'all see I got the new light set up. I got the new side. Ba baby, we looking real professional, like real professional. If y'all go to my social media, y'all can see the new type of uh, viral shorts that I'm able to put out now with the new lights and the new 4K camera. We looking real official like over here. Nevertheless, we finna go ahead and get this thing started. Um, before we get the show started, guys, you know, with heavy hearts, I must say condolences to the family of Eric Mays out of uh, Flint, Michigan. I know a lot of y'all have seen the crazy ass videos of the the stern black man collecting and gathering Mrs. Fields and Miss Galloway at the city commission meetings and it's gone viral the way he stands up for the people and be fighting quiet as it's kept y'all say eric mays be standing up for the people but i'm of the belief that that flint city commission never got shit done because all they was in there doing was arguing the whole dog on time <laughs> or whatever i refuse to believe that they were ever successful in getting anything passed or accomplished but we need more leaders like Mr. Mays holding people accountable, scrutinizing the contracts and getting the people together. If you want to have some fun, y'all, y'all can go on YouTube and just go down a whole rabbit hole of Eric Mays videos, getting Miss Fields, Miss Galloway, getting Quincy together. And I think the other lady name was Mrs. Hobbenacker or something like that. He used to get they asses together. And I know those people used to hate getting dressed, driving to the uh, city commission meeting, knowing that they was going to have to fight Eric Mays that afternoon. Second order of business. Y'all see my face? I ain't got that. See, see, Eric Mays might be dead, but I'm not dead with him. Baby, baby, I had to take that cremation number five right back to Matt, honey. Whitefish had done goop me. Okay, point of order. Point of order. Whitefish down at Mac had the goop me let me tell you something if you black like this and not like this do not be looking at them damn makeup tutorials for them damn white people on youtube okay that white gay bitch told me to use translucent powder i was just in here bored and as a part of my overhaul for the show and for my personal brand i was like you know q what can you do to look better yourself when you come on camera and uh Giving y'all my beauty tricks, you know, luckily for me, I have good skin. 
literally the only thing when it comes to makeup that I ever do is put a little bit of concealer up under my eyes and I put one stripe of eyeliner on my bottom lid. That's all I ever do. That's all I've ever done. When I do live TV work, they put a little translucent powder over my face to keep my face from being shiny. So anyway, like I said, I'm Robin, you did all this. I did all this. I bought all this nice shit with y'all money. And I said, okay, let me let me come on and give them Connie Chung. Let me give them, uh, you know, Kelly Ripper. Let me come on and give the girls Gail King and Hoda. So I said, you know, if I'm overhauling everything, let me overhaul my body. So I'm on YouTube looking up male makeup tutorials. And this sissy on that had all these products. And I, now I knew something was wrong when this punk was using five and six damn products. I said, baby, you never going to have me in the bathroom like no woman getting ready to go to the club, taking 30 minutes to put no damn mud on my face. All right. And here I go writing down everything he told me to get. And when it got that old dusty ass powder, okay, looking like homie the clown had done socked me in the face. Y'all, he had me up in here looking dead. And see, y'all already called me inconsistent and shit. It was either I came on looking dead or y'all hoes was going to have to wait 20 minutes and y'all was going to think church was canceled or whatever the case may be. So I just, I, I just came on looking a fool for y'all. But I think I... I think I'm looking good in that bitch, okay? I will not be joining Eric Mays down to the casket. And don't look at... Black people, do not look at any makeup tutorial from white people because they don't do black skin, okay? That gave me that damn white translucent powder. I started to put that damn powder on my balls in my damn shoes, shit. Because I didn't think I could take it back once I opened it. And that $40 powder, bitch, it was going to keep my feet from stinking or something. I was going to find a way to use that motherfucker one way or another. But my friend worked for Mac and said I could take it back. So I did. Shouts out to Be Rich Beauty, uh, my friend for doing makeup. But I look good, honey. I look good. <laughs> and just to prove to y'all how good I look, baby, I'm finna give y'all, y'all, I bet I bet you y'all hoes can't do this. This is white. Ain't nothing on it, bitch. That's good skin. That's good skin, bitch. One more time. One more time. Doodle brown. Lower, 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 lower. Ain't nothing on it, bitch. Ain't nothing on it, bitch. Ain't nothing on it. How many? A white rag of humble a lot of y'all hoes. A white rag of humble a lot of y'all behind my ears, bitch. Ain't nothing on it. Ain't nothing on it, bitch. It's clean, ho. Up under my neck. It's clean, bitch. How many of y'all hoes could say y'all could do this? How many of y'all hoes? It's nothing on it, bitch. Okay? That's that good skin, bitch. Trying to do me. I don't think so. Half y'all hoes took a piece of paper right now, wiped y'all face, it'll look like y'all wiped y'all ass. Okay? Trying to do me, bitch. Fuck it, I never always talk about somebody, and he ain't even cute himself. He ugly, bitch. Ugly wear, bitch. I might be ugly sometime, bitch, but I ain't ugly today. Okay? Not me, girl. And one thing about it, and two things for sure, when I step out, bitch, I step out. All right? Now, let's talk about it, because, see, some of y'all scared to take an introspective look at y'all self. I ain't never walked around and said I was the cutest thing on earth, but I damn sure ain't the ugliest, bitch. Okay? That's all. Listen. Life is about being in the middle, bitch. I might not be at the front of the line, but I damn sure ain't at the back, bitch. I'm running with the herd. Just as long as I'm running with the herd, I'm doing better than some of y'all, okay? Period. Period, bitch, okay? We all can't be beautiful, but none of us want to be ugly, bitch. As long as I ain't all the way back there in the back. And then I'm going to tell y'all something else y'all got to learn to do. 
whether you fat, skinny, ugly, got two short legs, two short arms, you have to learn how to play up your positives and accentuate the positives. One thing I always did and a bitch could never take from me, bitch, is this skin and these teeth. Now, you can talk about everything else, bitch. I could be ugly everywhere else, bitch. But I ain't ugly in this skin. This no makeup, no filter having skin, bitch. And I ain't ugly in these teeth. Now, I might be ugly on this shoulder, and I might be ugly in the back, bitch. But I damn sure ain't ugly in this clean, smooth, blemish-free, non-oily, non-blotchy, even this smooth, all over skin, and these teeth. Okay! Y'all, I'm high off of water tonight. I ain't even drinking. Anyway, y'all, let's move on over to our political corner real quick before we get the show started. Oh, and another thing. And I got my nose fixed, bitch. I went to the ENT and my nose ain't motherfucking running no more holes. Y'all don't understand. Them bright ass lights. When I, So first of all, I've always suffered from sinus issues as a kid. When these bright ass lights beam in my face, it make it hot, make my nose run. And y'all was saying on Fox Soul, my nose didn't run. And when I did TV... My nose didn't run, and that is actually incorrect. What y'all didn't realize is that when I was doing Fox Soul, we had two, we had six two-minute breaks. So during those breaks, it would allow for me to adjust myself. And when I do television, there normally is a three-camera setup, and when my camera was not on, it granted me the opportunity to adjust myself. I'll give y'all a little movie magic. Anyway, oh, and my feet pretty, bitch. Well, the, the left one is. I got to get the right one done. Um, And I'm going to tell y'all something else, too. Let me show y'all something real quick. So y'all know I'm gaining weight in everything from eating. And so, you know, I just got a little bit. I just got a little bit right here. And, um... Since goals and everybody doing Miss Netta, they reached out to me. And child, I'm thinking I'm just finna let these hoes lipo this shit out, okay? Bitch, I don't feel like running. It's too hot. It's too hot. They said if I do cardio, but I think I'm just finna do flex scope. I told them, they said they could put, if they could put the line, if they could put the line right here. Now, I don't need... I'm fine. What I'm talking about? No, I don't need it. Do I need it? I, I could just walk. I'm just tired, y'all. Um, oh, they say goals botching the people. They what girl, listen, they they that that fat girl that be on social media that got roles in places that I didn't even know existed on the human anatomy, they just did her. And I said, baby, if they got machines that can suck out all that goddamn fat. Good God Almighty. I don't think I'm gonna do it either, y'all. I'm just being lazy. Um, I ain't gonna do it. I, I I'm I'ma just try to run. Maybe I'm just gonna have to run at night. Or whatever the case may be. Um, I you y'all right, I don't need it. Nevertheless, y'all, let's go ahead and get into these topics. We got two stories in our political corner this evening. The first story is talking about uh Aaron Bushnell. He is the U.S. airman who set himself on fire in front of the U.S. embassy in protest of the war over there in Palestine and Ghana. I mean, in Gaza. Um, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I ain't feeling no type of condolences over here in my heart. I, 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 I'm, uh, uh, Marlo Wren says, so tragic, is it? How you gonna protest genocide by genocide in yourself? Like, um, I don't, 
don't, I don't think I'm contributing to his fume. He was at, in front of the Israeli embassy. I don't think I'm bringing nothing to his fume. This didn't have to be. Um, and quiet as it's kept, you white, you need to mind your business. Okay, this is another instance of white people always in somebody's business. And you got so involved in them people business that you had an emotional response and went and set yourself on fire. And I hate what I'm about to say out my mouth. But in the grand scheme of life, Mr. Bushnell, you are so insignificant that it had zero impact on what's going on over there at that uh, with that damn war. They cleaned your body up. They extinguished that shit and sent your ass over to the morgue. And it is business as usual. And in protest of the war, you have now torn up your own family and your own loved ones. And you proved absolutely no point. You don't protest genocide by adding to the death toll. You don't protest genocide by genociding yourself. You would have been better off shitting on the ground in front of the damn embassy. You would have been better off running naked in front of the damn embassy. At least that would have made the newspapers. You are some random, nondescript man who died and nobody gives a damn. And I'm not trying to be cruel. I'm just, no one cares. You literally were just some random ass white man in Mall of America. Nobody cares. And now you have hurt your loved ones. I don't know if you are married with children, but you are somebody's son. You are somebody's family member. And a lot of y'all are telling me to stop. No, I'm telling the God honest truth. Nobody gives a damn. You are just one of, an, of, of 7 billion people on this damn planet who killed your damn self for no reason. It made no impact. And I know by being in the Air Force, you felt like you was contributing to the damn genocide. Well, get out the shit. Get out the shit and let them court-martial your ass and go to jail. But killing yourself, you it, it, it made no impact. It was a distraction. And this is mental illness once again at its finest. This is what happens when people don't have coping skills. Okay? You could have called my ass. I'd have told you what to do. It's harsh. I may have told it bluntly. I may have said it with no fucking compassion, but y'all know I'm telling the truth. Ain't none of y'all, ain't, ain't a damn single one of y'all gonna toss and turn and lose no sleep over this man killing himself in front of the damn U.S. Embassy. The only person that this had an impact on was his family. You ain't even gonna get the President of the United States to send a tweet or say anything in response to it. It was just a waste of life, and it's unfortunate. This is definitely a mental health issue. Um, and speaking of mental health, let's talk about this old avocado-shaped, mangy-haired ex-president of ours, Donald Trump, talking about um, his mugshot um, made him more endearing to black people. And I'm going to read the quote in 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 uh, verbatim. I got indicted for nothing. There were uh, they were doing it because it's election interference, and then I got indicted a second time, a third time, and a fourth time, Mr. Trump said. A lot of people said that's why black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. It's been pretty amazing. I'm sorry. He said that is why black people like me, because they have been discriminated and hurt so badly. And they actually viewed me as being discriminated against. It's been pretty amazing. Who are these black people? Who are these black people? Because they damn sure ain't the ones that be doing the Cupid Shuffle with me down at Juanita House. They damn sure ain't the ones that be down to the bar with the Honda cars be. It damn sure ain't the wives or the husbands that I used to hunch back in the day. It damn sure ain't the ones that be, who is these black people that feel like you be discriminated against? And see, here's the catch 22 and, and, and the double meaning of this, right? Because all those MAGA and those Trump people, they're clapping and they're saying, yes, the blacks agree with Donald Trump. 
But in order for you to agree with that statement, white people, that also means that you agree that black people are discriminated against. And y'all are the same ones that's running around and telling us that we damn crazy and that racism don't exist and that we're not discriminated against. So which one is it, bitch? Because you can't have it both ways. So if you agree, and if we as a country agree that black people agree that and we like Donald Trump in his mugshot because he's one of us because he's been discriminated against, that means that you guys are also admitting that the U.S. discriminates against black people. Oops. Oop, gotcha. Gotcha. If that ain't a Freudian slip for that ass, the only black people that agree... I, I can't even call... I almost called him a Negro. Sir, you frauded the country and then want to call it discrimination. Okay, girl. I ain't going to spend too much time on him because he not going to upset my makeup that I'm not wearing and disturb my tears. All right. We're going to move right along to something more fun. Princess and Ray J getting divorced for the 13th time. Let me tell y'all something. I have never and will never be a fan of the disillusion of a family. I'm going to need these hoes to go get, go get divorced. I'm going to need them to go get divorced because I thought they was divorced already. Like, why y'all keep getting divorced? <laughs> Princess and Ray J don't got divorced more times than anybody can count. Y'all keep getting divorced and keep getting back together. And I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm going to be very honest with you. It's not love. It's not love. Now, I'm a man, a gay man. I think that Princess Love is a beautiful woman. And from my perspective, I think that she is still pretty enough and popular enough to go out on the open market and get her another celebrity man or another baller or another rich man to take care of her. Because listen, that's, that's what all of them want. And every time they go through this, we finna get divorced, not finna get divorced thing. I am of the belief that Princess stays because of the lifestyle. I think because Princess has those young children, I think she questions and wonders if, and especially considering her age, if she will be able to secure another rich man. And, and, and I think that fear of her thinking she can secure another rich man is what makes her stay with Ray J. Even though it's paining her, these girls don't want to give up the lifestyle. These girls are so worried that somebody going to say they fell off. These girls is so worried and so scared to work, okay? Let me tell y'all something. I'm finna give y'all some free game. I'm finna give y'all some real free game right now. Do y'all want to know the easiest way to not have to work? Take your ass to Barnes and Noble and get you a book on how to trade. Trading for dummies and play the market. If you learn how to trade and learn how to invest, you literally can take $10,000 and turn that $10,000 into fifty, dollars then turn that fifty dollars into hundred. There are so many people who are liberating themselves from the corporate rat race by day trading. Learn how to trade. Okay, you don't want to do that. You are a damn fool if you get with a man or a woman who has an abundance of money 
And while you are in love and he is in love and they are willing to give you unadulterated access to the money that you don't take that money and start you a business. Do you think if Keisha Kayor and Gucci man get divorced the day of the morrow, that girl going to flinch because she took the money and built a business and built a brand. Baby girl, you could have took, if you didn't want to do no work, you could have took the money and franchised the McDonald's and franchised a Starbucks. You could have took the money and opened up three daycare centers and just had your family members run it. You could have took the money and opened up a group home and keep old people and you keep their social security checks uh, as the revenue. You could have took the money and opened up a string of food trucks. You could have took the money and opened up a stream of Airbnbs. There is just, you don't work. You don't work. So, and I say all that to say, you're staying for the lifestyle. Create the lifestyle, baby. Take them Negro. And this is not just for princess. This is for any man or woman who is sitting in a situation right now where they partner got a whole bunch of money. You'll be a damn fool to sit there and not do nothing with it. Sell hair. And let's not act like you don't know how to sell shit because you were selling pussy and ass to get to where you got to. So, bitch, obviously you're a good salesperson. Okay. Because we know anybody who was part of Floyd's girls, you're selling pussy and ass. You know how to sell stuff. I just don't understand. And then you're in a situation where you got to stay with somebody that you don't want to stay with or that treats you wrong or that's cheating on you because of the lifestyle. And listen, we could talk all this shit about how we would leave. It's hard out here. It's hard out here. And I ain't mad with anybody who stay with a bitch because they life comfortable. Either that or learn how to take your heart out the equation. Baby, I'd have been on took my heart out the equation. That nigga could have ran the street. As a matter of fact, I would encourage that bitch to go on tour and I'd be fucking the trainer. All up in his house. All up in it. I wouldn't give a damn, child. I would sit my ass up in there, take my heart out the equation, and I'd be slanging pussy all up and down the interstate on his dime, going to get in hotel rooms, hunching my niggas on his dime. One or the other. Either stay and take your heart out of it or, or prepare for your exit and get you some money and leave. That's what I would have did. Now, she won the poker concert, uh, poker tournament, and that was good. And, and people make a lot of money in poker. But um, Princess, why you still look good and why that thing still got a little bit of scratch on it, go ahead and leave and get you another man. And I'm going to tell y'all another thing, too. After y'all be in these relationships, man or woman, with these type of women and men that do y'all like this, the next go around, don't go get the same man. Princess, go to New York and go down there and play around Wall Street and get you an investment banker. Go get you a hedge fund manager. Go get you a movie producer. You in L.A., somebody that's rich but that's behind the scenes. Go get Michael Joy and son. Juanita will accept you before she accept uh, Laws of Big Lip Ass. That's what I would do. Keeping in the vein of our reality TV news, honey. NeNe Leaks. Now, y'all know I don't watch that baddie stuff, but about five minutes before I got on the air, I just happened to watch a clip of the baddies Two girls were getting up to fight and like the, the security and stuff was like setting the stage for them to fight. And then Nene Leaks is just sitting there on the sofa as they're getting ready to fight. And the girls fight and the security picks Nene up and walks her off the stage. And all I could do was put my head in my hand with secondhand embarrassment 
Because I know that Lanithia Lee had to be asking herself, how did I get here? And I know that Andy Cohen has to be somewhere sitting next to Anderson Cooper holding his baby, laughing his ass off. You have completely fallen off when you are sitting on the stage of a Zeus reunion, essentially narrating a fight. I was just so embarrassed. And this is one of those things where, you know, there's a saying in Hollywood that goes, you're only as good as your last job. So with that being said, for the slow people in the back, it's your last job that dictates your next job. You went 900 paces backwards, Nene, by doing this Zeus thing. Bravo is the creme de la creme of reality star networks and people. Everybody wants to be a Bravo celebrity. And then if you can't be a Bravo celebrity, you know, you'll settle for VH1 and then all else fails, child. You go over there to WeTV and then anything below that really just doesn't count, right? You were a Bravo levity. You, you had access to certain circles and you were regarded a certain way because you had that Bravo behind your name. And now you are sitting, first of all, you're too old you are a 50-something-year-old woman sitting on a stage amongst ratchet 20-something-year-olds fighting. <sighs> Work ain't honest, but it pays the bills. Because what it's telling me, um, and don't get me wrong, I have heard this. They say Lemmy pays very well. Zeus is making so much money over there. They say that Lemmy pays very well. And I am pretty sure Nene got compensated very well. So she took the job. You know what I'm saying? Because she probably needed the money. You know what I'm saying? She needed the money. Um, and I just hope this short-term decision that Nene made to do this baddies reunion doesn't have a long-term effect on her ability to garner other work and other highbrow work because it 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 just was not a good look. It's like, where do you go from baddies? I am of the belief that most things in life can be fixed with a conversation. With everything that's going on over there with the Real Housewives of Atlanta, I would have tucked my tail between my legs so far and I would have humbled myself so low that you would have thought I was best friends with the devil. I would have called Andy. I would have sat up on that phone for two hours, crying, expressing remorse, saying how I was going through what I was going through because of Greg. And now in hindsight, I realized I made a horrible error and I have learned from my ways. Secondly, I would have had my agent and my PR people go over there to NBC Universal and try to clean up the mess that I made, I would have gotten on every public platform and had my agent set up every press tour conference and did every major show and apologized loudly and boldly. Then the next thing I would have did to show how sincere I am, I am willing to come back for one season and take minimal pay to atone for what I did and got back in good graces with the people. That's what I would have did. Anything can be fixed with the conversation. But that is what I would have did. If I wanted it, okay, let me put that caveat in there. If I wanted it and if 
TV is where I want it to be. That's what I would have done. But as a matter of fact, even if I didn't want it that bad, I still would have did it because now, right now, it's a, a monumental and it's going to be a history-making time in the Real Housewives of Atlanta for what they are about to do with this whole shakeup. That's what I would have did. But like I said, only if I wanted it. If you don't want it and you don't want to be back there, then fuck it. Moving right along. Marlo Hampton and Sonya Roth get the boot from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Sayonara, Ariba Dorchi, uh, bath. Okay. Um, let me tell y'all something, and, and, and it is rare that I am remorseful. I am one of the biggest people who was an advocate for Marlo Hampton getting a peach. For whatever reason, I wanted Marlo to get a peach so bad. I just thought that somewhere along the way, there was just going to be this very interesting story in this woman's background. And then they gave Marlo a peach. And it turned out to be rotten fruit. Um, there's no other way to say this. Um, Marlo is just a gutter person. And no matter how much designer clothes you dress her up in, and you can't take her physical from her, mama looks good. She got all her clothes. Mama looked good. And at times she's entertaining. But her energy is just dirty and it's low. And I don't give a fuck how much expensive clothes that Marlo had on. She declassed that shelf, in my opinion. She declassed the show. Um, there was just, she used to just go so low. And it's like, ugh. Uh, Sonya, on the other hand, I don't even know how Sonya got there. Okay? It feels like these last couple of seasons with Housewives, it feels like the people who was doing the production, you know how you got two more years on the job before you retire so you really don't give a damn what go on. You do the bare minimum because you're just trying to make your deadline so you can retire. That's what these last couple of years of Housewives was given, it was just like, child, I don't give a damn. I just need some warm bodies to fill seats so I could do my last two years and retire. I don't know how Sonya got there. Uh, now, I I'm going to be honest with you. Drew ended up having some good personal storyline, but before we even knew what Drew's storyline was, I didn't know how the hell Drew got there. I know y'all said she played in the game and she played in the TLC story, but I'm sorry. Drew was never, in my opinion, a big enough actress to have gotten there. Shamari DeVoe should have never gotten there. I'm going to be honest with you. Tamika Foster should have been a real housewife of Atlanta. Tamika Foster should have been in the mix with the Sherays and the Kenyas and the Phaedras. They're all in the same age bracket and they all walk, walk in the same circles and Tamika's interesting and got a story. I don't know how they picked this last set of girls. Um, and I got a feeling they about to pick a stupid cast of young girls that we don't want to see either. But we just going to have to stay tuned for that. Real Housewives of Patanka. Did y'all see the scene in the Real Housewives? Let me tell you something. I can't stand Robin Coochie eating ass. I can't stand Robin Coochie eating ass, and I can't stand Giselle Clitoris licking ass. And here is why. No matter if Robin is wrong, but, you know, it's more so Robin. Giselle can be wrong as all hell, and Robin is going to find a way to eat her coochie no matter where they at, all right? So we were looking at the scene last night about Giselle talking about her daughter going to Florida for college, 
and Candace and Wendy start exchanging looks. Then they cut to Robin's confessional, and Robin is like, okay, guys, you know, I know you don't like Giselle, but this is about her daughter. I cannot stand when people are reaching, okay? Nobody was coming for Giselle's daughter. Nobody was shading Giselle's daughter. Nobody was throwing rocks at Giselle's daughter. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. Now, what they were throwing shade about, I don't know. They were exchanging looks. The energy that I picked up on was, look at this bitch and how full of shit she is. That's the energy that I picked up on. They were not doing anything to maim Grace. Secondly, when it comes to them talking about their daughters going to Florida, you know, a lot of y'all like to throw the word ignorant around to insult people. And I'm not, I'm not using it in an insulting way right now. I'm using it in a dictionary way. Um, Wendy's sentiments about sending the children to Florida were a tad bit ignorant. Um, I'm somebody who lives here. And yes, our governor is crazy. And yes, we do have stand the ground, stand your ground laws here. But to send the message that, you know, a black person is just physically unsafe in Florida, that's not accurate. Not to mention her daughter would be going to Tallahassee. It's a college town. It's a very small town. She would be encapsulated with thousands upon thousands of black students. The only thing to do in Tallahassee is college. There's three colleges there. Tallahassee, uh, FAMU, Florida State University, and TCC. Her daughter would have been more than fine in Tallahassee. Anybody's child would be more than fine in Tallahassee. Honestly and truthfully, Tallahassee is probably the safest place in Florida. It's only as big as a quarter. And 90% of the people there are students uh, aspiring to higher education. So, you know, and I'm not knocking Wendy. She, she probably has never been here. She's probably never visited FAMU's campus. And when you go to college in Tallahassee more times than not, if you do go on a road trip anywhere, it's to Panama City or to Orlando. All right. It's not like she'd be gallivanting in, you know, random parts of Florida when you go away to school. So her daughter and anybody else who is listening to me, your children are more than fine. And FAMU has consistently ranked the number one public HBCU in the United States for years upon years upon years. So I just want to clear that up. And, and, and even to Wendy, she said, I wouldn't send my boys to Florida Yes, Florida is crazy, and yes, y'all see a lot of propaganda in the news, and yes, we have stand-your-ground laws here just like a whole bunch of other damn states in the United States of America. So I don't want y'all to think, oh, you can't go to the gas station and pump gas because some white person is going to shoot you. That is not how it goes down here in Florida. Please, Wendy, cut it out, and you need to be worrying about why all y'all Nigerians always stealing and think y'all better than people and bleaching y'all damn skin since you want to talk about us Floridians, okay? And I ain't even from Florida. I'm from Miami, but I got family from Florida, and I don't appreciate you talking about Florida like that. Um, Keeping in the same vein with reality TV, baby, we got to talk about Dr. Heavenly and Sweet Tea. Now, y'all know I had to call Heavenly and get her ass together, right? The minute I called Heavenly, she answered the phone. She said, I know, I know. I said, Dr. Heavenly Kinds DDS. See, when I call her Heavenly Kinds DDS, that's how she know I'm serious. I said, Dr. Heavenly Kinds DDS. What are you doing? Heavenly said she was in bed. She was laying down. And she was tired of that little girl fucking with her. <laughs> and Heaven, <laughs> Heavenly said she was tired of that little girl fucking with her. So she cleared it right on up. Okay? 
and heavily said she ain't got nothing, so I came for her husband. <laughs> I, and see, that's the Florida in us, bitch. I'm going to attack your cockeyed baby. I'm going to attack your dead grandma. I'm going to attack your spouse in the wheelchair. If I can't get you on nothing, I'm going to hurt you one way or another. And heavily said, well, shit, sweet tea ain't got shit, so bitch, I came for a man. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. But I, I told Heavenly she need to stop, though, because you got businesses, and you grown, and don't be arguing with Sweetie. And the pedophile thing was a bit cringy. It was a bit cringy calling Dr. G a pedophile. And that was a bit cringy, and I don't know what that was referring to. I don't know if that's because he's so old and she's so young. But then the people got to digging up old records and old interviews about Dr. Greg. And they said Dr. Greg oversubscribing people. But see, oh, Heavenly told me she got real mad when Sweetie said she not respected in the medical community. That's when Heavenly got mad. That thing triggered her or whatever. Because one thing them doctors don't play about is their licenses and their reputation. And Heavenly said she had not got mad. So she said, shit, Sweetie ain't got shit. So she came for her man. You better leave Florida people alone because we ain't got no filter and nobody is off limits. And hence why y'all keep sitting here saying, Tamika read me, Tamika read me. No. I'm here to let y'all read in between the lines here. With Florida people, nobody is off limits. And Tamika experienced a loss. And I know the way my mouth can get, and it probably would have went there. Okay? And then on the front page of every blog would have been, he hate black women. Look how he attacked that woman. He didn't have to go that low. So, no, I made a grown man mature and a brand decision because I know my mouth. I would have destroyed that woman. And in the end, it would have made me look bad because I went in so hard. So out of respect for the relationship that we have and to protect my own business and my sanity, my sanity, I chose to give y'all and her the illusion of a win. I took that L. And plus, I started the shit. So I was like, whatever, Q, you started it. You can't get mad. You started it. Moving right along. Mia Culpa. The people say the movie bad. The people say the movie bad. Is it bad, y'all? <laughs> I didn't see it. Um, I love, listen, we cannot negate the impact that Tyler Perry has made to film industry. But I do think that one place where Tyler Perry goes wrong sometimes is being overconfident in his ability to create content sometimes. And from what I am hearing is that the numbers are not doing very well on Netflix at all as far as the movie. I would have loved to have seen, can Kelly Rowland act y'all? I haven't seen it. Um, but a lot of people are saying that the movie is subpar and, um, I have to be inclined to believe it because Kelly Rowland is a relatively big star and for her to be in something and nobody is like ranting and raving and being like, Ooh, child, you gotta go watch this. Um, you know, I don't know. I have to check it out for myself. I haven't seen it. I'm not going to say anything too much more about it because I haven't seen it, but that's just 
what the people is saying. Um, last but not least, honey. It's a special kind of embarrassment when you try to jump somebody and both of y'all get beat up. Now, bitch, I got two hands and y'all got four. I got two hands and y'all got four. How, how the hell y'all managed to get beat up um, by Cam Newton and y'all was jumping him? And he got hair. And he got hair. Why you didn't pull his hand and wrap it like this, like toilet paper, and slang his ass from left to right? It was two of y'all and y'all got beat up. How y'all get beat up by Cam Newton? And I'm curious to know what happened. And, I, and, and granted, I wasn't there. But I can already tell you, it was some niggas walking up, being niggas, trying to be funny, trying to act out, being disrespectful. Because that's what niggas do. That's what jealous ass niggas do. That's what clowns do. Trying to get moments and fucked around and got their ass. They fucked around and found out. Cam don't bother nobody. Cam don't bother nobody. Now, did any of the details of the fight come out? Because I'd be curious to know the context behind what happened and how the fight started or whatever. Um, but we ain't heard, we ain't heard none of that. Y'all put some money in the cash app collection plate if y'all want me to keep coming to work because I'm tired. Okay, I need to be incentivized. <laughs> I'm just joking. Anything y'all put in the plate is much appreciated. Nevertheless, y'all, this hour flew by pretty quickly, y'all. Had a good time. Listen, y'all keep, keep, keep me in y'all prayers. I love the love and support, y'all. Robin, you did all this. Look, it, it's, it's coming together. Things are coming together. It's coming together, y'all. I got some most secrets and stuff. I can't really tell y'all just yet until we sign the contracts. We got some more stuff talking. Somebody asked, Raymond W. said, am I going to talk about Simon and Portia? Go on my Instagram. I did Simon and Portia on my radio show last Friday. You can get my sentiments about Simon and Portia there. And if you want in-depth sentiments on how I feel about the Wendy Williams situation, you can go to my my YouTube page. I did a, pay, I did a whole post a, a whole separate video specifically about Simon, I mean, about Wendy Williams and what was going on with that, y'all. Um, that's all I got. Ain't got no more. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're new to this channel. And I'll talk to y'all hoes later. Bye.